Hey y'all, it's Tyla and I'm back with another art video. And today I'm going to show you how I took my reference photo from this and drew it onto a canvas like this using a simple grid method so that I could turn it into a painting that looks like this. I've been using this grid method for a long time and it's super easy once you get the hang of it. So let's go ahead and get started with the video. Uh. So in order to do the grid method, we're going to have to do a little bit of math, but don't worry. It's simple. I'm an artist, not a mathematician. So if I can do it, so can you. I knew that the canvas that I wanted to paint on was going to be 36 inches by 36 inches which means I needed to make my reference photos something that was easily divisible um, into 36. I chose 12. This means that one, one inch square on the smaller reference photo is going to be the same as a three inch square on the bigger canvas. Basically, we're gonna be taking the smaller 12 by 12 inch photo and making it three times its original size. If this sounds confusing, don't worry, I'm gonna show you exactly how I break it down in the rest of the video. So this is my process for making pretty much all of my uh, reference pictures. I like to draw everything out on my iPad and procreate first um, before I even start painting. It really helps, especially since I'm doing this grid method. I wanna make sure I like the way everything looks before I get to the gridding part. I also use procreate for the actual creation for the grid. If you turn on your drawing guide in Procreate and address the grid size down there on the bottom, um, I'm gonna make sure that they are 12 squares going vertically, 12 squares horizontally, and that means that each square is going to be one inch by one inch. Once I have my grid, I'm going to label going um, vertically. I do numbers one through 12 and horizontally I do letters. Um, that just helps me keep each row straight so I know like which column I'm on at what time. Basically, the purpose of this grid is to help me make sure that I have her proportions correct. So for example, I need to know that the tip of her nose stops um, in 3K. And to be able to draw that on my canvas proportionally, I need to make sure that everything's labeled so I don't get anything mess messed up because I'm literally going to be looking at this image and painting each square like one at a time. I'm going to use it as a guide for the whole thing. But I can show you a lot better than I can tell you. So let's go ahead and fast forward to the painting part. So now I'm going to go ahead and prep my canvas. Um, I painted this one pink because it's going to be going with this one. So and that's how I started this one. So I just went ahead and painted, did a pink underpainting. And then I'm going to grid everything out in chalk because this is 36 by 36 inches and my image is 12 by 12 inches. So with one inch grids which mean 12 divided by 36 is three. So each one of my new boxes should be three inches each, I believe. Yes, and that will make it proportionate to my reference photo. So I'm gonna use some chalk and a ruler and do that. So this part of actually putting the lines on the canvas is so tedious to me. I hate this part, it takes the longest, but it's really worth it because you need to make sure that everything is straight before you continue on to the next steps. I use my ruler to make um, marks that are three inches apart, going horizontally and vertically, and then I just make straight lines going across, make sure they connect. I try my best to keep the lines as straight as possible, but that's the reason I'm using chalk because it's super easy to wipe a line away and redraw it if you mess up. If you were to use graphite, um, the erasing and everything, it would stain your canvas and it would turn gray and it'd be almost impossible to get rid of. So you really, really, really wanna make sure that you're using chalk. 
Like I probably wiped this canvas clean and redrew re these lines like four or five times before I got it right. But this is the most important step because if these lines are walk wonky, then your final project product is gonna end up wonky. So once I was finished making the grids, I went ahead and labeled um, it the same way that I labeled my reference photos, you know, numbers going vertically, letters going across, and then I drew my reference photo just using lines um, as best as I could going literally cell by cell and just making sure that I got all the proportions correct. So I just copied my reference photo the best I could line for line. Um, the grid really helps me know like where the head starts and stops and getting the side profiles correct so it's really helpful. Next we have to seal our chalk outline with final pastel chalk um, matte fixative. It needs to be matte and it needs to be for pastel and chalk. If you use the one that's for painting then you won't be able to paint on top of it. I know it seems backward because it says final fixative but um, using the matte one you're able to paint on top of it still. If you do not use this fixative your chalk lines are just going to disappear when you like accidentally run your hand across it and stuff like that. So it's really re this step is really really important. A few moments later took a very long break <laughs> on this painting but now that I have everything drawn out I'm going to begin painting so yeah I'm gonna get all my paints together and then we gonna get to it and here I got my I got my reference picture pulled up. Let's get to work. So my painting process is pretty straightforward. Um, it's a lot of prep to use a uh, to create a grid for a reference photo, but it's really worth it in the end. It makes the painting process go a lot more smoother. So um, my first step is just to establish all of the lines that we put in with chalk and really solidify them so I'm able to see them better. Then I'm gonna take it literally one section at a time um, to fill in the values and the, uh, the highlights and the shadows of this painting. Her skin tone was all monochromatic black and white so that was really easy for me to uh, mix colors for that but the grid is also a great thing to use if you have problems mixing colors and putting them in the right places because you're able to really see exactly where a shadow stops and where it begins um, which really helps you with the placement of them. If you were wondering why the background of my painting is hot pink in the first place, it's just a trick that I use to help me control the values in my artwork. I learned this in art school when I was getting my degree. It's really hard for me to tell um, how dark and how light I'm making things when I'm just painting on a stark white canvas. Um, I can't really describe it. Um, if you're familiar with color theory, I know it has to do with that. Like colors look different next to white than they do next to other colors. So if I was to paint this completely and then go ahead and paint the background after the fact, like my colors would be off because I'd be so used to seeing them next to white. So putting this hot pink color down first helps me control my values much more so I don't have to go back and fix the painting over and over again because I feel like I got the colors wrong. Now we're getting to my favorite part of the painting which is the curls. I was going to use the grid and try to make them like exactly like the reference photo but I decided to just kind of let loose and do my own thing because I wanted the curls to kind of have this free and loose uh, texture so that it would match the kind of abstract background that I'm going to be putting in next. But yeah, I really like how it turned out. That hot pink background also helped because I was able to leave it showing through and um, I didn't have to spend a whole bunch of time putting in the highlights of the curls because it was already there with the background. So at 
this point, I put the reference photo away and I just finished up the background, solely going off of vibes. I was trying to make it this abstract situation to match the energy in the hair. So I just did that, had fun, and I really love how this painting turned out. This is the final product. Um, this painting is one of my favorites that I've ever done. I still have it hanging up like to this day. And yeah, I really just love everything about this painting. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you'd like to see more art content, you can follow me on TikTok at Tyla Made It or on Instagram at Tyla the Creative. I have a lot of fun on the internet doing art things. Or if you're feeling really generous, you can hit up my online shop at tylermadeit.com slash shop. I have a bunch of prints and a bunch of stickers, Halloween themed right now. So thanks again for tuning into this video. Um, I really hope you found it helpful and stay creative.